Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I will say our customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's reading is Vayetz, He Went Out. Torah portion for today is Genesis 28, 10 through 32, 2. Prophets is Hosea 10, 7 through 14, 9. Psalms 91, 1 through 16. Abrahadesha is Matthew 3, 13 through 4, 11. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6. Genesis 28, 10 through 32, 2. Jacob left Beersheba and went to, toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night. Because the sun had set. Taking, on, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. He dreamed and behold there was a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of Elohim were ascending and descending on it. And behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yahweh, and Elohim of Abraham your father, and Elohim of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and the east, and to the north and to the south, and then your offspring shall be the families of the earth. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Yahweh is in this place, and I did not know it. And <clears throat> He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of Elohim, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, and the name of the city was Luz. At first, when Jacob made a vow, saying, If Elohim, made it, if Elohim will be with me and will keep me, in this way that I go, and I will give me, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then Yahweh shall be my Elohim, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be Elohim's house, and all of that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. Then Jacob went on his journey. And came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and he saw a well in the field. And behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. For out of that well the flocks were watered. The stone on top of the well's mouth was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep. And put the stone back in its place to cover the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is still high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go. Pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, and she was a shepherdess. 
Now as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, the sheep of Laban, his the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him into his house. Jacob told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what you what shall be your wages. What shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the other one, and the name of the younger one was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and in appearance. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, "I will serve you seven years, and your younger daughter Rachel." Laban said, "It is better that I give her to you." that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is complete. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his female servant Zilpah to his daughter Lay to be her servant. And in the morning, behold, it was Lay. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also, in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her task. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave female servant Bilhah to his daughter Rachel to be her servant. So Jacob went into Rachel also. And he loved Rachel more than Leah and served Laban another seven years. When, Yah when Yahweh saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Because Yahweh has looked upon my affliction, for now my husband will love me. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Because Yahweh has heard that I am hated, he has given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Again she conceived and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will be attracted to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore this name, his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son, and she said, This time I will praise Yahweh. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she ceased bearing. When Jacob saw that she bore when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she envied her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children or I shall die. Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in the place of Elohim who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Then she said, here is my servant Bilhah. Go unto her so that she may give birth on my behalf, that even I may have children through her. So she gave him the servant Bilhah as a wife. And Jacob went into her, and Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. <clears throat> then Rachel said, Elohim has judged me and all, has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Rachel's servant Belha conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With mighty wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. When they saw that she had ceased bearing children, she took her servant Zilpha and gave her to Jacob as a wife. And Leah's servant Zilpha bore Jacob a son. And Leah said, Good fortune has come. So she called his name Gad. Leah's servant Zilpha bore Jacob a second son, and Leah said, Happy am I, for women have called me happy. So she called his name Asher. In the days of the wheat harvest, Reuben went and found 
<clears throat> mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Lee. And Rachel said to Lay, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, It is a small matter that you have taken away my husband. Would you take away my son's mandrakes too? Rachel said, That he may lie with you tonight in exchange for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came in from the field in the evening, Lee went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he lay with her that night. And Elohim listened to Lay, and she conceived and bore a fifth son. Lay said, Elohim has given me wages because I have gave, because I gave my servant to the husband. So she called his name Issachar. And Lay conceived again, and she bore a, bore Jacob a sixth son. And Lay said, Elohim has endowed me with good endowment, and now my husband will honor me because I bore him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. After she bore a daughter and called her name Dina. Dina. Then Elohim remembered Rachel and Elohim listened to her and she opened her womb. She conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, saying, May Yahweh add to me another son. As soon as Rachel bore Joseph, jo Jacob said to Laban, Send me away that I may go down to my own home and country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, that I may go, for you know the, the service that I have given you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, I have learned by divination that Yahweh has blessed me because of you. Name your wages and I'll give it. Jacob said to him, You yourself know how I have served you and how your livestock has fared with me. Before you had little before I came, and it has increased abundantly. And Yahweh has blessed you wherever I turned. But now, when shall I provide for my own household also? He said, What shall I give you? Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this for me, I will again pasture your flock and, and keep it. Let me pass through all your flock today. Removing from it every speckled and spotted sheep and every black lamb and the spotted and speckled among the goats and they shall be my wages. So my honesty will answer me later. When you come to look into my wages with, with you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among or lambs, if, if it is found with me, shall be counted stolen. They even said, Good, let it be as you have said. But that day Laban removed the male goats that were striped and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white on it, and every lamb that was black, and put them in the charge of his sons. <clears throat> and he sat at a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob pastured the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took fresh sticks of poplar and almond and plane trees, and peeled the white, peeled white streaks in them, Exposing the white of the stick, and he set the sticks that he had peeled in front of the flocks and the troughs that it was watering places, where the flocks came to drink. And as soon as, and since they bred when they came to drink, the flocks bred in front of the sticks, and so the flocks brought forth stripes, speckled and spotted. And Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the striped, and all the black in the flocks of Laban. And he put his own droves apart and did not put them with Laban's flock. Whenever the, strain, the stronger of the flocks were breeding, Jacob would lay the sticks in front, lay the sticks in the troughs before the eyes of the flock, that they may, might breed among the sticks. But for the feebler of the flock, he would not lay them there. So the feebler of Laban's and the stronger of Jacob's, thus the man increased greatly and had large flocks female servants and male servants and camels and donkeys. Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has gained all his wealth. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. When Yahweh said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and lay into the field. 
or his flock and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me with favor as he did before. But Elohim of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. But Elohim did not permit him to harm me. If he said, The spotted shall be your wages, and all the flock bore spotted. And if he said, The stripe shall be your wages, and all the flock bore stripe. Thus Elohim has taken away the livestock of your father and given them <coughs> to me. In the breeding seasons of the flock, I lifted up my eyes and saw a dream that the goats had made it, and the flocks were striped, spotted, and, and mottled. Then the angel of Elohim said to me in a dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift up your eyes and see all the goats that mate with this flock are striped, spotted, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am Elohim of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now rise and go out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered to him, Is there any portion of inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has indeed devoured our money. All the wealth of Elohim has been taken away from our father. Belongs to us and to our children. Now then, whatever Elohim has said to you, do. <coughs> so Jacob arose, and set his sons and his wives on camel, and drove away all his livestock, all his property that he had gained, the livestock of his possessions that he had acquired in Padan Aram, to go to the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob tricked Laban and Armian by not telling him that he intended to flee. He fled with all they had and arose and crossed the Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. When it was told to Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled, he took all his kinsmen with him and pursued him for seven days, and followed close after him into the hill country of Galilee, of Gilead. But Elohim came to Laban and the army in, in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban and his kinsmen pitched tents in the hill country of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have tricked me and driven away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and trick me? And did not tell me, so that I might not send you away with the mirth and songs and tambourine and lyre? And why did you not permit, permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm. But the Elohim of your father spoke to me last night saying, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And now you have gone away because you longed greatly for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. <clears throat> Anyone with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our kinsmen, point out what I have that is yours. And take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and to the tent of the two females, but he did not find them. And he went out into Leah's tent and entered Rachel. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them in camel saddle and sat on them. Laban felt all about the tent, but he did not find them. And she said to her father, Let not my lord be angry that I cannot rise before you. For the way of women is upon me. So he searched, but did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry and hated and berated Laban. Jacob said to Laban, What is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? For you have felt throughout all my goods, and have you found all of your household goods? Set it here before my kinsmen and your kinsmen, that they may decide between the, between us two. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. What was torn by wild beasts I did not bring to you, I bore the loss of, of it myself. From my hand you required it. 
whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was. By day the heat consumed me and the cold by night. And my sleep fled my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house, I have served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages ten times. If the Elohim of my father, the Elohim of Abraham, in fear of Isaac, had not been on my side, surely now you would have been sent away empty-handed. Elohim saw my affliction, and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, and the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you have seen is mine. But what can I do this day for my for these my daughters or for their children whom they have borne? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar, and Jacob said to his kinsmen, Gather stones, and they took the stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. And Laban called it Jagar Sahudath. But Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he named it Galid in Mitzvah. For he said, Yahweh watched between you and me when we were out of one another's sight. If you oppress my daughters or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no one is with us, see Elohim is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, let set this heap in the pillar which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the pillar is a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and you will not pass over this heap, this pillar, and this pillar to me, to do harm. And Elohim of Abraham, and Elohim of Nahor, and Elohim of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and Jacob offered a sacrifice in the hill country, and called his kinsmen to eat bread. And they ate and spent the night in the hill country. Early in the morning Laban rose and kissed the, his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned home. Jacob went on his way and the angels of Elohim met him. And when Jacob saw them he said, This is Elohim's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahaniam. Hosea 11, 7, 14 through 9. My people are bent on turning away from me, and though they call out from the Most High, he shall not raise them up at all. How can I give, up, give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? And how can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warmer and warm and tender. I will not execute my burning anger. I will not... Again, destroy Ephraim. For I am Elohim and not a man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after Yahweh. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, the children shall come trembling from the west, and they shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I return them to their homes, declares Yahweh. Ephraim was surrounded with me, surrounded me with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah still walks with Elohim, and is faithful to the Holy One. Ephraim feeds on the land, and pursues the east wind all day long. They multiply falsehood and violence, and they make a covenant with Assyria. And oil is carried to Egypt. Yahuwah has, ind indicated against, has an indictment against Judah, and will pursue Jacob according to his, to his ways. He will repay him according to his deeds. And the womb he took his father, took his brother by the heel, and in his manhood, manhood he strove with Elohim. He strove with the angel and prevailed, and he wept and sought his, his favor. He met Elohim at Bethel, and there Elohim spoke with us. Yahweh the Elohim of hosts. Yahweh is his memorial name. So you, by the help of your Elohim, return, hold fast to your love. 
and justice, and wait continually for your Elohim, a merchant in whose hands are false balances. He loves to oppress. Ephraim has said, Ah, but I am rich. I have found wealth for myself, and all my labors they cannot find in me iniquity or sin. I am, Elo I am Yahweh your Elohim from the land of Egypt. I will again make you dwell in tents, as in the days of the appointed feast. I spoke to the prophets. It was I who multiplied visions, and through the prophets gave parables. If there is iniquity in Gilead, in Gilead, they shall surely come to nothing. In, Gil in Gil Gilgal, they shall sacrifice bulls. Their altars also are like stone heaps on the furrows of the field. Jacob fled to the land of Aram, and there Israel served for, for a wife, and for a wife he, gained, he guarded sheep. By a prophet Yahweh brought Israel up from Egypt, and by a prophet he was guarded. Ephraim has given bitter provocation, so his Lord will leap his blood guilt on him, will leave his blood guilt on him, and will repay him for his disgra disgraceful deeds. When Ephraim spoke, there was trembling. He was exalted in Israel, but he incurred guilt through Baal and died. And now the sins more, they sin more and more and make for themselves metal images, idols skillfully made of their silver, all of them the work of craftsmen. And it is said of them, Those who offer human sacrifice kiss calves, therefore sh they shall be like the morning mist. Or like a dew that is, that goes away early, like the sh chafe that swirls from the threshing floor, or like smoke from a window. But I am Yahweh your Elohim from the land of Egypt. You know, no Elohim but me, and besides me there is no savior. It was I who knew you in the wilderness, in the land of the drought. But when they had grazed, they become full. They were filled and their heart was lifted up, therefore they forgot me. So I am to them like a lion, like a leopard I will lurk beside the, the way. I will fall upon them like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will tear open their breasts, and there I will devour them like a lion, as a wild beast would rip them open. He destroys you, O Israel, for you are against me, against your helper. Where now is your king to save you in all your cities? Where are all your rulers, those whom you said, Give me a king and princesses? I will give you a king in my anger, and I took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is kept in store. The pangs of childbirth come for, for him. But he is, an un, he is an unwise son. For at the right time he does not present himself at the opening of the womb. Shall I ransom for the power ransom them from from the power of Sheol? Shall I redeem them from the death? O death, where are your plagues? O Sheol, where is your sting? Compassion is hidden from my eyes. Though they may flourish among his brothers, the east wind the wind of Yahweh shall come rising from the wilderness, and his fountain shall dr dry up, and his spring shall be parched, it shall strip his treasury of every precious thing. Samaria shall bear the, her guilt, because she has rebelled against her Elohim. They shall fall by the sword. Their little ones shall be the dashed in pieces, and their pregnant women ripped open. Return, O Israel, to Yahweh your Elohim, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take with you words, and return to Yahweh. Say to him, Take away all iniquity, except what is good, and we will pay with bulls. The vows of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, and we sh will say no more, O oh, our Elohim, to the works of our hands. And you, the orphan, finds mercy. I will heal their apost apostasy, and I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive, and his fragrance like Lebanon. They shall return and dwell beneath me shadow beneath my shadow.
They shall flourish like the grain. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answers and looks after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. From me comes your fruit. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of Yahweh are right, and the upright walk in them. But transgressors stumble in them. Psalm 91, 1-16 He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to Yahweh, My refuge and my fortress, my Elohim in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings he will find you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalk, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made Yahweh your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot, because he holds fast to me in love. I'll deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life, and I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Matthew three, thirteen through four eleven. Then Yeshua came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Yeshua answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Yeshua was baptized, immediately went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Then Yeshua was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, command the stones to become loaves of bread. And he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of Elohim. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Yeshua said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your Elohim to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to them, All these... I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Yeshua said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your Elohim, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. 2 Corinthians 1 through 6. 2 Corinthians 4 1 through 6. Therefore, having his ministry by the mercy of Elohim, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced gracefulness, underhanded ways to ref refuse. We refuse to practice cunning or tamper with Elohim's word. But by the open statement of truth, we would command ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of Elohim. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their ca case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Hamashiach who is in the image of Elohim 
For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Yeshua HaMashiach as Lord. With ourselves as your servants. For Yeshua's sake, for Elohim who said, Let the light shine out of the darkness. Has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Elohim in the face of Yeshua HaMashiach. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, our Lord, giver of the Torah.